This is Neil Severance, President of the Board. Thank you for looking in on this presentation. It is the legal and moral responsibility of the Board of Directors to assure the future of Pelican Sound. This is accomplished by working through committees that meet openly and regularly to plan the future and to avoid chaos. Our responsibility as owners is to exercise an informed vote, which we share equally. Thank you for doing your homework by looking at this important presentation. Today's agenda includes three parts. Luke Gwens will provide a strategic recap of where we have been and where we are now. Jim Whitmore, our general manager, will provide an overview of the actual proposed details. And Neil Collins, the chairman of the Finance Committee, will provide all of the details of how this will be paid for. Uh, welcome to this uh, special online uh, presentation of our big uh, capital projects. Um, particularly for those who weren't able to join us in the meetings over the last three days. Um, uh, we think it's important that the membership um, it can be fully informed about the scope and the reasons why of this project. Uh, so I'm going to talk about why we're here, how we got here, uh, present you again with a summary of the facts so that you are well informed um, before making decisions. But before we jump into all the details, um, let me just um, have your attention pulled to our website. And I think most of you know our website because that's what you use to log in for the Chelsea uh, bookings. Um, but I want, I want to ask uh, the, uh, the members if they actually took the time to browse around uh, our website. And if they do, did so, they will have discovered that we have a brand new video uh, actually online. Um, and we just want to make sure that everyone present here has an opportunity to see that video again because it's a beautiful introduction to uh, how Pelican Sound has evolved and became a fantastic, vibrant community. Well, did you like that video? Um, personally, I like it because it's a, it's a beautiful showcase on the complete set of amenities that we in the community have built out 
Uh, it shows the premium golf course, uh, all the other amenities that have been uh, added to it. Um, we are a really active um, community and, and it's great to, to see that. Um, but as maybe as you noticed, we didn't show a couple of items. Um, there is no golf main clubhouse to be seen, nor the pro shop, uh, nor the tennis pro shop. So a couple of items we couldn't showcase because they're actually not in line with the quality standards of all the other amenities that we have in the club. Um, and we want Pel Pelican Sound to be as good in everything we do to make sure that we are really truly delivering on these best experiences possible as the best bundled golf community. Um, so last year we talked about how we could address these two weaknesses, the main clubhouse and the record center, and turn that really into an opportunity for our community to, real, to really be a full showcase um, against other competitive clubs. Uh, but before jumping into that detail, um, let's tackle the elephant in the room, many questions that people actually have, and that is why were the numbers so high and why were they exceeding what we talked about last year? Well, first of all, there is definitely, we have a very hot econ economy. Um, there's a lot of construction going on, there's a lot of communities very active. Uh, the cost of material buildings have gone up significantly over the last two years, suddenly we didn't catch that on time. Um, the local economy here in, in Southwest Florida and, and Estero is also pretty hot. Uh, the labor market is uh, tougher to get uh, at um, and that comes at higher prices. Um, also last year we had terrific uh, positive feedback from the community on what we presented. Uh, you definitely liked what you saw. Um, you, you, you let us know that and, and, and based on that enthusiasm we even extended the scope of the project uh, after we presented with some of the goodies that you wanted to have included. Um, but we had some negative surprises as well as we went through some extra testing later on, uh, building code uh, imperatives that we needed to meet, which inflated the total cost of the project as well. So unfortunately, the total cost is a bit more than what we expected. But that doesn't mean that the quality of the project has changed. On the contrary, I think today we're happy to present you a project that in scope and in benefits even will be, will be matching what we made as a promise last year. So you remember when we met last year um, in the town hall meetings, uh, we presented actually conceptual drawings. Um, Drawings based on, on, on the vision, on we've thought what would be possible, what could be possible. Um, and it was an important step to take because at that point we needed to make a decision as a board whether we wanted to go into the next step of the process, which was detailing uh, all the bits and all the specs and, and going out uh, for bits, which is a, time, a timely uh, and time-consuming process, but it's also a very expensive process. Um, so the, the board wanted to make sure that we were walking in the right direction, that the community was supportive on that vision and that concept, and thank you for giving us that positive feedback. Um, at the same time, we had already some initial discussions with the bank, so we had rough ideas about financing terms and what could be possible. Today is very different. Today we are actually presenting you final designs with firm costs. Um, we have all the contracts here and all the detailed specs. Um, so now it's a matter of jumping ahead, um, going forward, moving on, um, signing on the dotted line because the contracts are now ready to, to be signed. And the good news is that um, the finance team and Jim and Lamar, they also locked in the interest rates at a very competitive uh, rate and protected us from the interest rate increases that we have seen over the last six to nine months. Uh, so we are really at a good spot when it comes to the terms of our loans. So today, ourselves and any other club in Southwest Florida, we have to deal with the same same reality of increasing cost of build material, materials, building costs, labor costs. 
So we had to step back and, and review the, the objectives of the project, make sure that we got the critical ones right. Uh, we made a distinction between the must-haves and the nice-to-haves. So we went through that detailed process, re-scoped, and went through a complete new bidding process. So today we're presenting you the outcome of that. And, and we just want to make sure that everybody clearly hears that we heard you in the community. Um, widely different perspectives from why can't we get it all and get the maximum Rolls-Royce version versus why can't we minimize uh, these and, and just get some painting and refresh it up and that should be good enough. Well, the point is that the board and the ad hoc committee has a responsibility to make sure that we recommend something which is not customized or tailored to the need of individuals, but that we bring a project forward that is best for the well-being of the club as a whole, not just for tomorrow, but for the long-term success of our community, doing the right thing for the long term. And last year we, we stated that our long-term ambition, our vision is that we want to be the most desirable, the best bundled community in Southwest Florida. Now, when you ask the question, what actually makes a community really, really good? Some key drivers, location, amenities, the kind of community we want to be, making sure we get the right balance in terms of, is this the best package, value for money uh, for the members? These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Well, first, location, location, location. No doubt that we have a prime location, West 41, access to the river and the Gulf. Uh, close proximity of retail, medical care, airports, shopping, restaurants, whatever we want. Um, secondly, amenities. Um, the golf course is, is by far an excellent pr premier uh, golf experience here in Southwest Florida. Uh, we have expanded our amenities uh, over the last couple of years, like many other um, communities, and we identified uh, our two weaknesses. Um, and we want to turn these weaknesses into opportunities, opportunities for us really to step up, to stay current, to be current, and to get closer to that dream of being the best bundled community. We want to be that best choice for any few member, future member that comes along and has to make the choice if this could be home for him or her in the future. Um, it's critically important that we can pursue this project both to entertain and retain our current members, to give them maximum benefits for what they pay, but at the same time making sure that we can attract and recruit uh, future buyers as they are looking out for their future purchase. So every year we have the member satisfaction survey and the survey is really a, a critical source of information for the, both the board and management uh, to get feedback from the community and, and systematically year after year the feedback that you give us so you the members is that FNB and the tennis courts are kind of the weaker spots of all the amenities that we serve overall we get great feedback but every time you remind us that we need to address and tackle these two topics um, particularly when we focus on FNB what it is personal choice in terms of what kind of variety on the menu you would like to have um, or it's the fact that the main clubhouse doesn't have the hours and the services available at the point that you would like to have them um, or you don't have an alternative when the river club is too busy uh, or too loud um, ultimately we face limitations to the current system um, and that makes that structurally if we really want to improve service for our members we need to tackle the system and the limitations so we can make a step change and really improve uh, the overall service levels that we should be able to provide to the members. So again, wh why do we want to pursue this big project? Why do we actually need to renovate and upgrade? Well, remember the club is 20 years old. Well, there's a life cycle natural uh, to every club and, and the world around us, the market around us is, is changing quickly. Uh, it's fastly growing, there's a whole bunch of new comp competitive clubs uh, coming on, on stream and a lot of existing communities are upgrading their own facilities. So when we look at what we have, uh, I think we all agree that 
the clubhouse is not really fully set up to deliver on the expectations that both the members have, but also how critical prospective buyers are looking and assessing uh, potential clubs that they want to join. Um, secondly, uh, for multiple times now, we identified that the record centers, particularly the, the infrastructure, the tennis courts, are way below any standards that we see in, in other clubs, and we just need to address those and get back to standards. Um, last year in the town hall meeting, we explained that traditionally the rental pool was the primary pool to convert people with a positive experience and make them owners in our community because, because they loved it here and they wanted to stay. Um, but that pool is shrinking, so less opportunities going forward. At the same time, we talked about the aging demographics of the, of the community, um, and the two combined uh, will lead us to a point where um, in the future we will become more dependent on people from outside the community to become buyers in this community because the internal pool of people available to keep the real estate market going and maximize the value for all of us is going to be shrinking going forward. Now these future buyers, they're pretty critical, they compare communities and they do have multiple choices. Um, Just Estero has close to 40 different uh, communities, maybe not all the same as ours, uh, but still uh, there are alternatives for people when they choose a place to stay or to retire. And there's not just Estero, there is Bonita Springs, there's the whole Southwest Florida area. So we need to make sure that we stay current with the markets um, and really that we can deliver on expectations and prove to pr prospective buyers that we are that best choice for them uh, when they make that final purchase. Now, obviously, they're, they're an important target audience. But also for our own members, we want to make sure that while we're here right now, we want to maximize the benefits and the quality of the amenities where we all pay for it together. So let's get the maximum value out of what we have. That's step number one. Okay, let's first have a quick look at the record center. Um, the primary objective of what we want to accomplish is, is bring the, the quality of the infrastructure that we have, both for tennis and pickleball, up to standards with what we see in the market at other communities. We're not talking about having a more premium facility than what is out there on average. We just want to meet that market standard. Um, second message that we want to uh, get across today is while we upgrade what we have, um, we want to make sure that it also becomes a showcase because today the realtor community can is not really proud to show off the tennis facility neither can they actually showcase the pickleball courts to prospective buyers we hope that tomorrow they will have an opportunity to show uh, a wow factor that's going to attract these uh, new prospective buyers in, in showing that this is a premier facility in line with the image and the quality that we have at the golf course. Um, message we want to get across as well is that this is not only a facility for the active racket sports players, but for everyone in the community as we are adding meeting room facilities um, and facilities to host social events. So this becomes an additional community location uh, for people to gather and host uh, functions. Given the location, the additional parking that will come along with the record center will be critical and complementary and be used as overflow for the River Club, which we desperately need when you see how busy it can get on Thursday nights. So back to the main clubhouse. Um, I look at this as a, half, a glass half full, half empty. Uh, today, as mentioned, we, the, the, the kitchen infrastructure that we have is old, outdated, and limits actually what we can do for the membership. Um, so for us, it's more that we would want to unlock the potential and maximize the usage of the, the building than staying with that limited use, usage what we have today. If we want to have regular dining service while at the same time there's a big event going on, then, well, today we cannot do that, tomorrow we can. 
Uh, today the kitchen is designed to make the one thing for a lot of people, but cannot handle other multiple requests besides that. Tomorrow we will be able to do so. Today the dining um, is mainly focused on indoor dining. Um, tomorrow we'll be able to add outdoor dining opportunities. Um, we go outside the community to find these kind of uh, opportunities. Well, tomorrow we'll be able to, did, to do this as well in our own community at a spectacular setting looking onto the golf course uh, that we have, a really prime location. And at the same time, the project will tackle other topics like private dining rooms for you to bring friends and family, uh, additional meeting rooms for the smaller groups, uh, and while we do all this, we, we're going to refresh and create the ambience, which is going to be lighter and brighter, make it look more current, more classy, more contemporary. Um, and while we do the big construction work at the building, outside the building, we'll focus on improving the flow um, for better traffic for the golf carts and improving our safety uh, challenges that we have at this current day given more owners have their own golf carts today so we really want to make this clubhouse a very functional flexible uh, clubhouse so that we can maximize actually the usage uh, for the membership uh, we believe this can truly become an additional vibrant social hub uh, another gathering place for people to meet friends and neighbors uh, here in the community on top of what we already have at the River Club. So as we went through the process of defining what really is critical going forward, um, must have versus want to have, um, we clearly identified that the concept of the two kitchens, we add a second kitchen to enable the fact that we can service people at the same time while we have big events. Um, while improving the, the overall capabilities of the big kitchen. Um, and those two things combined will give us the opportunity to actually serve people at the same time and provide them with more different options. Um, the grill is uh, very much in demand. It's a growing feature that we have and we want to provide that with a permanent uh, fixture. Um, the Pelican Pub today is limited mainly to um, in, inside consumption. We want to make it more appealing, more inviting, um, make it a pub that's both for inside as outside consumption, just like we can experience at the, at the River Club. Uh, the main dining room will be expanded um, from in capacity terms, but also in, in terms of experience. We want to provide you with a better um, uh, entertainment experience. And last but not least, we want to use the outside space to create additional opportunities for people to get together with friends, um, neighbors, and, and, and gather uh, in the outdoor area around the clubhouse, which will be the lounge. Um, all of this at the same time, while we lift the roof, it will enable us to bring much more light into the building. Um, and wouldn't it be great that we can slide open all these nano doors and have a perfect view uh, on, on the lake course and, and the driving range and the setup of a golf. A terrific location. Let's use and benefit from, from what we have. What we have skipped out, out of the project is what we talked about last year. Remember, we talked about a kind of a Starbucks type little cafe inside the building. We decided that was really not absolutely one of the priorities. So we excluded that and we integrated the functionality of that in the pavilion. Um, we also talked about a separate new building, two-story building for pro shop and offices. Once again, it would have been nice to have, but is it absolutely critical? No, actually we believe that the, the pro shop uh, in its current location, it is the prime location for our prime amenity in this, in this community. Um, we wanna keep it there, but we're gonna upgrade and you will see as Jim presents that, how that's going to be way more inviting and appealing. Um, we'll combine offices together at the accounting center near the tennis uh, pro shop um, um, in close proximity to the, to the current car barn. And talking about the car barn, we decided, yeah, once again, a new separate new building might be nice, but we can do with what we have. We know how to upgrade and reface 
uh, the existing car barn to make it looking exactly exactly like the main the main clubhouse. And yes, we will deal with the demand for more smaller meeting rooms across the whole project, both at the main clubhouse as well as the new records facility. Hello to all those who could not attend a town hall meeting in person. I thank you for taking the time to listen to uh, this presentation that will help you get as much information as possible so you can make an intelligent vote on this project in the next week or so. As Luke described, there are many factors in what we're trying to do in the improvement plan here in the golf club project. One is to just get updated with the actual look of the, the building, both from an exterior and interior, and basically de -tuscanize the uh, the structure. Then we also have added quite a few features uh, to the club as well for multiple options for, for dining. This would be the front view as you turn into the clubhouse, uh, into the main parking area uh, and the portico share. You can see how we have eliminated and removed most of the columns that were not structural and just kept the structural columns, squared everything off, removed the dormers from the roof line, and you can see here how you'd oversee now into the new staging area uh, with the bag drop uh, covering the carport area for the bag drop. Uh, what you see in this picture is uh, basically the pavilion, which is off on your right, which will be the replacement for the outdoor grill space. Uh, this space will have both a, a outdoor bar, a open kitchen concept, so you can see through into the kitchen, have some uh, outdoor seating both covered uh, and unco and uh, covered with the roof line, then obviously covered with umbrellas. And you can see how we incorporated the bistro that was going to be in the pro shop, outside the pro shop that we will now serve out of the pavilion. Uh, you'll also notice this new uh, roundabout for the golfers so that when they come from the staging area before the round, they will go up to uh, the left-hand side here, left of the pro shop, which will now be the new uh, water and coffee station so the golfers can grab their water and coffee. There will also be two restroom facility, um, a men's and ladies restroom facility that will be accessible from the outside of the building. So you no longer have to go into uh, the golf club to just use a restroom if you're uh, making the turn or before golf. This is a overview as you pull away from the clubhouse a little further so you can get a feeling of how the new staging area starter booth and the new roundabout uh, to get to access your coffee and water uh, beverages before you tee off um, just to give you a, bit, a little better view of what it would look like uh, from an aerial perspective and you can see on the right hand side uh, near the driving range and chipping green the additional cart parking we've added in this area as well to accommodate a better flow of traffic and to get carts sort of removed from the path so that we can keep uh, two-way traffic going without any interference and then you can see how the uh, outdoor hub area sort of incorporates itself and flows into the pavilion. Just another view again from the east, another pulling a little further away. And it just shows how all this area will transition from one side of the clubhouse to the other. This is just another uh, drone type aerial shot showing how the uh, reconfiguration of the staging area uh, will work. And this shows basically 75 to 80 carts set up for a shotgun start, so we won't have to use a driving range for shotgun uh, starts in the future. And you can see here we've added additional parking all the way past the chipping green, where we'll have the accommodation to handle about another 100 golf carts uh, for parking around the golf club. This would be a back view or a view from the south of the golf club exterior. You can see how we've added the covered seating area outside of the Pelican Pub, or what's currently the grill room. Uh, so we have that, and then we have added a, a Heartside Lounge, we're calling it, which will be another social gathering hub area for, um, for social gatherings. These uh, little pods are gonna be able to sit anywhere from four people all the way up to about 10 or 12 with different seating options with chairs, couches, etc. Also with fire pits individual for each uh, area. You can see how we also have all the nano doors, all those doors you see um, on the back side are all operable doors similar to the River Club, so we can open all those up, same as behind the uh, Pelican Pub. And we've added additional uh, glass and windows um, above those doors 
to get as much light into the main dining room as possible. And this is the same view uh, from the same perspective, uh, but just a nighttime shot of seeing how the uh, exterior lighting would be able to create a nice ambiance here at nighttime. So now we're going into the interior of the clubhouse and showing you sort of the um, expansion of how we're uh, renovating this to, as Luke said in his uh, presentation, to have multiple kitchens, which is the main focus here, so that we can have um, numerous things going on at the same time. The current uh, kitchen is in the gray area, and we will be expanding the kitchen out towards the main dining room. Um, and then we obviously are extending the main dining room out towards number Lakes 9 uh, fairway area so that we grab that space back under the air that's currently uh, under the canopy uh, behind the main uh, dining room. Uh, the other gray area on the left near where the uh, current uh, grill area is and the current snack bar will be expanded to a secondary kitchen. This kitchen will be, uh, being, will be able to service both the Pelican Pub, uh, the outdoor dining by the pub and the pavilion, and as well as serve our, our hub op operation, the Starbucks hub operation that we moved to the exterior between the pro shop and the pavilion as well. Uh, the, the nice part about this feature is it will allow us to have a event going on, let's say in the main dining room area, and still allow us to have people in the Pelican pub or the outside area of the pub and or the pavilion as well. So we could have an event going on and have other dining options uh, for residents uh, during the times of events. Uh, we've also added another multi-purpose room. So we have the multi-purpose room in the pink, um, what would currently be in the area by the waterside room. And we've added another multi-purpose room uh, adjacent to the lobby and the grill room, our Pelican Pub, uh, so that we can accommodate small groups and meetings in these areas as well. And we've all, also in the yellow or mustard color expanded the size of the ladies restroom and men's restroom within the main clubhouse. And on the left-hand corner there in the yellow, uh, that's the additional restrooms we added for the golfer use that will have uh, entrance from the outside of the golf club. So when we look at the space that's been uh, renovated and added, uh, we do have a seating capacity increase of 184. And that breakdown uh, comes like this. The main dining room that we currently have uh, has a maximum capacity of 232 seats. Uh, the new Vista dining room, or aka main dining room, under this new plan would have a maximum capacity of 320 seats. Uh, the grill room currently has 94 seats. Uh, what we're calling now the Pelican Pub would have a maximum seating uh, capacity of, of 98. Uh, the outdoor grill, which we're considering the patio behind the main dining room and the tables and chairs around the near the grill currently have 100 seats. Uh, the pavilion and hearthside lounge and the little hub area between the pavilion and the pro shop would have 192 seats. So as you can see, the total maximum capacity of the current facility is 426. 
Uh, under this new proposal, the total seating would be a maximum of 610. So looking from a visual perspective, we want to do sort of before and after to show you what the uh, each area would sort of look like after completion. As you can see, this is our main lobby as you first walk in. And you can see how this uh, epitomizes uh, the Tuscan uh, look, which we're trying to change over to a more transitional uh, contemporary look. So obviously we remove all these columns, uh, change the coloring out, the flooring, and it would look something like the next slide that we're going to show you. And this would be what the new lobby looks like. Uh, obviously you can see how it's a lot lighter and brighter. We're also raising uh, the roof up a little bit so that we get a better vaulted ceiling and get a little bit more ambiance when you first walk in and a uh, initial arrival feeling. Uh, you can see how the colors uh, have brightened up quite a bit and we're going with more of the natural tones and a combination of tile and wood look to bring in multiple uh, fabrics and uh, feeling of the texture of the room. This is a current grill room, a traditional golf grill room where the colors are dark with dark woods. Uh, we want to transition this as well into a more contemporary and modern feel. Uh, so again, we're going to use pretty much the same space, but to re reconfigure it, especially the bar, so we make it an indoor-outdoor space, which you'll see on the next slide. So this would be the new grill room. Uh, you can see how much lighter and brighter that this is in the current grill room. We've created a oval type bar that will be both indoors and outdoors. Uh, these doors will partition and fully open just like the River Club so that we can open the doors and have full indoor and outdoor uh, capability here. Now you can see how we have different uh, tables, heights of tables, sizes of tables, and we've added the banquette type option here as well. And uh, all these uh, panels both above the bar, the ceiling and the side walls are all acoustical panels to help with, the, with sound abatement. So this obviously is our main dining room uh, where you'll see that you have the A-frame uh, roof section that goes from left to right as it currently does in the main dining room. And you see how it's very, this is the middle of the day when this picture was taken. You can see how dark it is even with the, the, in the, uh, the lighting that we have on. Uh, we want to solve that by adding uh, the nano doors all the way through the back and adding more windows and a, and a transom up top so we get as much natural light in as possible. And we also will not have the overhang like we currently have um, behind the dining room so that we'll get maximum light exposure in the dining room. So this would be the new dining room. We're basically flipping around the frame, A-frame section of the, um, of the roof line so that we can add that transom of light up above. Uh, so this uh, A-frame will basically um, mirror the dance floor, which has been uh, increased by about 30%. Um, you'll also see how we have lowered on the left and right side of the dining room, uh, the ceiling so that it will add some uh, intim intimacy and warmth within the room. And will also act as a sound abatement scenario as we are lowering the ceiling and adding acoustic and coffered ceilings that will sort of deal with each section of dining area to deal with the specific noise coming from that specific section. Uh, so we're confident that we will do a good job on noise abatement here within this uh, main dining room. And again, all those windows you see um, from floor height up will all open up uh, so we can open up the main dining room out to the Heartside Lounge uh, when weather permits, which should be most of the time here in season. So this is our current pro shop. Uh, we will be basically keeping the pro shop in the same space, but reconfiguring uh, some of the walls around the, the pro shop and adding um, some new lighting and changing the color schemes to brighten this room up as well, and which you'll see on the next slide. So this would be how the new pro shop would look. You can see how much lighter and brighter it is, uh, adding some nice natural tones with the wood, uh, wood tones in here, uh, creating different wall space. You can see the TVs at back behind the counter, which will now be more in the corner. Uh, that will monitor, obviously, the pace of play and allow you to watch the golf events that are going on. And what we're doing here is adding a lot more uh, slat wall and reconfiguring the wall space so that we don't have to slat, put the slat wall uh, along the window walls like we currently have. So it'll allow a lot more light into the pro shop and, again, allow us to use that space for better retailing 
of our merchandise. This is our outdoor grill space. Um, I think that's enough said on this space. Uh, it, it works, but uh, we need to do a little better than this going forward. This would be the new outdoor grill space for the golfers. They would come up a few stairs and come and get their order from the person you see there at the hostess stand. Uh, you can see the open kitchen concept with the glass so that you can see in as food is being prepared. Uh, if you look off to the left, you can see the little fireplace and gathering area underneath the pavilion. And you can see some people there at the pavilion uh, bar area uh, watching the food be prepared. So this is just another shot of the pavilion and outdoor grill area. Uh, you can see how we have multiple TVs. Uh, we have the glass area for the kitchen. So it's a uh, kitchen you can see in as food being repaired. You have a bar area and then some tables that are both uh, outside with covered umbrellas and also underneath the actual pavilion uh, rooftop. Uh, we will be uh, also adding some additional technology features for both the golfers and anyone within the community where hopefully you'll be able to send a push notification uh, directly to uh, the kitchen to order food and pick it up at your leisure. This is currently the outdoor seating area outside the main dining room. Uh, this will be converted into what we're calling the heart side lounge. So this is what we're calling the Heartside Lounge. You'll see how there's numerous social gathering spots here as well. Uh, anywhere from four to 10 or 12 people uh, with the other couches or chairs for sitting, uh, different sitting arrangements. And you'll see individual fire pits associated with each one of these gathering spots. Uh, this is a back view of the current uh, tennis pro shop. And this is our current uh, temporary pickleball courts uh, along the FPNL easement, which we're trying now to move into uh, one location to tie in both racket sports together with tennis and pickleball. So this would be the racket center complex uh, pro shop, um, a two different social gathering spots, both on the back and the side uh, that can be used for pretty much anyone in the community for any type of social events. We've also added a meeting room space in here and as well as a men's and ladies restroom facility as well, uh, the pro shop and some uh, storage as well here in this building. And this would obviously be the inside of the uh, tennis and pickleball uh, racket pro shop. And you can see some people through the window there that they're sitting in that outdoor covered area on the back side. And you can see the little doorway there on the right that would uh, be able to get into the kitchenette area uh, for uh, service. So this would be the combination racket center where we have the eight tennis courts, uh, the eight pickleball courts. You can also see in the green awning there, that's the back of the pro shop building um, and the side over there to the right with the different looking um, awnings. This area can hold about 100 people. Uh, so this would be a secondary social gathering spot for a lot of events like that are similar to what people do currently on Monday nights at the River Club. And we would have the ability with the little kitchenette to have warming and cooling capability. Uh, in the pickleball courts, you'll see another awning between the, the eight pickleball courts that can accommodate around 100 or around 80, sorry, 80 people uh, under the canopy. And we have put in 10 foot fences here around all the pickleball courts with eight foot of acoustic block paneling to deaden the noise uh, coming from the pickleball courts. And the parking lot here basically is an extension of the current River Club Overflow parking, which will cut through the racket center and then connect back over to Island Sound Boulevard. So you can cut through the parking lot to get to Island Sound, Hammock Greens, and that section of the community. This would accommodate approximately 100 more vehicles and have ample other opportunity for golf cart parking as well. So from a project timeline perspective, uh, assuming that we go out for vote and the member ship majority uh, approves the plan. Uh, our goal would be to start the infrastructure and site work uh, by August 1st. Uh, obviously when the clubhouse shuts down, all F&B and social activities for the upcoming season will have to be dealt with at the River Club. So the goal would be to have the parking area at the Racket Center complete by October so that we can use that parking uh, for the River Club due to all the events having to be down at the River Club. 
Um, so we would then also have the new tennis courts ready to go by the time we're under major construction here at the clubhouse so that we can use where the, new, the current tennis courts are. Uh, we can take those down and make temporary parking for golfers uh, in that location. So the target dates would be the racket club could be completed by January 2019 and the golf club by September 2019, assuming that we can start by August 1st. So from a cost perspective, uh, we look at the project cost breakdown. Uh, we'll see that the golf club is approximately 10 million, sports complex 3 million, uh, refacing and converting the um, uh, tennis pro shop to create more office space and some multi-purpose space is around 207. We still have engineering, architectural fees and so forth to pay, which should come in around 189. And we have a contingency of 359, which is 14.1 uh, million. I do want to note that on the $10 million clubhouse number that includes all furniture and fixture and kitchen equipment. Um, so the actual construction portion of that number is around 7 million of the 10, 3 million is FF&E. Uh, some questions came up during the process of whether it would be cheaper to just totally uh, raise this pro shop and build it or this clubhouse and build a new one. Uh, we did look at that option, uh, but we're ending up with about 30,000 square feet of uh, space under air under the current uh, construction cost of new construction. Uh, that's coming out about $300 a square foot. So the simple math is that 30,000 times the 300 square feet is uh, $9 million, plus you then still have the FF&E. So to go new, you'd end up probably at 13 million or more. Uh, so you'd have a 20 to 30% increase if you tried to go new. And the reality is by what we're doing here with the renovation, all HVAC, electrical, plumbing's all being redone. So the reality is we're ending up with a relatively new clubhouse anyway. So it didn't seem uh, prudent to go ahead and pay, pay for a 30% uh, increase to try to go new. So obviously when you have a renovation and an expansion, there are some uh, regular operating costs associated with the project as well that will be ongoing. Uh, we did some quick calculations on that. And you'll see here that the replacement cost number will be impacted about $33 a year per door, but that won't start until after the seventh year. Um, from an operating cost perspective, you'll have the River Club portion of it, the sports complex adding about $15 per door, and the golf club increase around $20 per door or total operating uh, impact of $35 a year per door uh, moving forward. Here are some questions we want to answer. How is Pelican Sound financing this project? How much is it going to cost me as a member? Is the River Club project paid for? And what happens if I sell my property? As Jim mentioned, this project is going to cost $14.1 million. Here's where the money is going to come from. $2.6 million is from replacement capital. This is the money we pay in <clears throat> as part of our dues each year. And it goes to replace equipment that wears out or is, becomes functionally obsolete. We're not borrowing any money from the future. This is just the money that we have allocated and saved for project for this project through 2019. Another major piece is from resale capital. This is the money all of us have paid, some of us more than once, as we've moved into or around Pelican Sound. We're going to raise $1.2 million between now and the end of the project in 2019. We've already spent $500,000 project to date on engineering, architecture, and consulting fees. So we're gonna spend an additional 1.2 million on the project. A couple of things are important to note. These, this projection is based on selling 75 homes a year in 2018 and 2019. We've been averaging 85 to 90, so that's a pretty conservative number. And we plan to use only 75% of this money, 75% of the 75 home sales through 2019. So a couple of things are important as a result of that. One, we'll still have 25% of the resale capital available in 18 and 19 for amenity enhancement projects. And remember, resale capital can only go for amenity enhancements, never for repairs or for operating expenses. 
two in 2020 and thereafter, 100% of the resale capital funds will be available for and for future amenity enhancements as decided by the board and recommended by strategic planning. The final piece is $10.3 million. That comes from a combination of a member contribution and a bank loan. And let's talk about that bank loan. We've arranged for a loan of $9 million, which we're going to pay back over seven years at a fixed interest rate of 3.7%. That's a very competitive rate. And we're appreciative that, that this loan arrangement was made before the interest rates began to go up. We've looked at other options. We could, for example, pay it over a longer period of time. We could have borrowed the whole $10.1 million. But either of those contingencies would cause the bank to have to renegotiate the loan at a higher interest rate and would cost us a million to a million five in additional interest. So we're very happy with this $9 million fixed rate 3.7% loan. One thing I want to mention is that the last payment on the River Club is due $750 in December of 2018. That's it. The new project payments would begin in January of 2019. So there's no overlap between the current River between the River Club project now completed and the new project about to begin. There are two financing options for members to consider. Option one, the default option, is for a monthly payment. That's designed to smooth cash flow for the club and for members. The first monthly payment would be uh, is $105 due January 2019. There'd be 84 payments of $105 a month for a total cost over the seven years of $8,820. Another option to consider, option two, is a one-time payment called our Quick Start option. That would be $7,900, and it would be due in July of 2018. What we do is send an email to all members in June, and you'd be able to choose whether you were going to do the Quick Start option or the monthly payment. In fact, you'd have to affirmatively choose the Quick Start option if no choice were made, or if you said no, you'll default to the monthly option. We weren't able to offer the quick start option with the River Club, but we have had people express interest in it, and we think it's a win-win situation for any owner who chooses that quick start. There are interest savings for the participating members. The difference between the 8820, the monthly payment total, and the 7900 is simply the fact that the quick start participants are not paying interest. It won't actually save the club any money, but it will allow us to have a smaller uh, loan from the bank and pay less interest and instead pay the interest to our members. It will also provide us an improved cash position for the club at a critical point of the project as we're beginning it and will allow us to accelerate infrastructure work so that the project can move along even more quickly than we have planned. But make no mistake, if no one takes advantage of the Quick Start program, we are fully ready to work on the timeline Jim has discussed and get this project underway by August 1st and complete it by the end of 2019. But if you participate in the Quick Start, it would be a great help for the club. Now, what happens if I sell my property during the seven years? And that's certainly a likelihood that people will either move within Pelican Sound or perhaps out of Pelican Sound uh, a sufficient number during that time. All of us, when we sell a property or buy a property here, whether we realize it or not, get what is called an estoppel letter. It's a rendering, it's, a, it's an accounting, if you will, put out by our business office that shows the buyer and seller uh, what monies have been paid, what monies might be owed if, if by the seller of the property so the buyer is fully informed of that. Now, in the case of monthly payers, typically the new buyer would just take over at closing. Well, however many months were left, the new buyer would just start making that monthly payment and be billed for it. 
for quick start payers, the pro rata portion that is unearned, the pro rata portion remaining in a sense, will be shown on the estoppel letter. So if someone were here for 42 months and sold their property, it would show half of the 7,900 as owed by the seller to the buyer. It also would show on the closing statement. That statement which shows adjustments for taxes, water bills and the like. The uh, a payment for the quick start program would show on that. Now, once chosen, here's an important point. Once chosen, your preferred payment option, you won't have the opportunity to change back. You can't do the quick start payment and look for a pro rata refund after two or three years, nor can you choose the monthly payment and after a couple of years decide to pay the rest in full, at least if not with a discount. So that's it for the finance side. Let me turn it back over to Jim Whitmore for closing remarks. So what are the next steps uh, in this project? So the timetable from this point is uh, we've had um, six town hall meetings, public town hall meetings that were um, held uh, over the last few days and had approximately 1,100 uh, members attend. Uh, we'll be getting feedback from all those meetings and the project team is meeting and discussing all the feedback today and tomorrow and we'll make a recommendation uh, to the board uh, for tomorrow's meeting on the 22nd. So the board is meeting March 22nd on Thursday uh, to have a special meeting to approve the project and approve a membership vote. Uh, assuming the board votes in favor, uh, they would send this now out to the community, you the member, and we would send that out on March 22nd um, by 5 p.m. and you would have until March 29th at 5 p.m. Uh, to fill the vote out and submit it back to the club uh, for it to count. Um, the club would then uh, take all those votes uh, tally them, meet with the NVRs, so the NVRs would cast uh, and ratify the vote. Um, this is pretty much a technicality as our documents require the NVR uh, to vote um, proportionally on how their constituents voted. They do not have an option on this, they have to vote as their constituents voted. So how does the proportional voting process work? Uh, every member obviously has the opportunity to vote, uh, so each unit is counted individually. Uh, the vote will be submitted to the administration office for calculation, not to directly to the NVR. And then the NVRs will vote those, uh, cast those votes on March 30th at 9 a.m., which is a Friday, and they will do that proportionally, as I mentioned in the slide above. We use the masters as a good example to explain this process. Uh, you'll see in this particular example, uh, the masters has 100 homes. Uh, in this particular case, 60 voted yes, 20 voted no, which gives a total of 80 votes. So 20 units did not vote. Um, but the proportional vote of this is you'd had 75% voted yes, which is 60 divided by 80. You have 20 divided by 80, which is 25% vote no. Our documents require that an NVR vote, uh, uh, a number of votes equal to the number of units in their area. So based on this proportional voting, they have to vote 75% yes and 25% no. So based on 100 units, they would vote 75 yes and 25 no on the proxy which would be given to them by the club after calculating all the votes and have the backup for how each of their constituents voted within their community. So what will be the member vote? You will be voting to approve as per article, per article 11, section 1110 of the declaration, a capital improvement assessment to fund the Golf and River Club sports complex project to be paid by each owner either by a lump sum quick start payment of $7,900 due on July 31st, 2018, or by monthly payments of 105 starting January 2019 and extending monthly until December 2025. Any owner choosing a quick start payment must notify the club by June 1st, 2018. If no notice has been received, the owner will be enrolled in the monthly payment option. So in conclusion, uh, we as a board, as a project committee, and as management uh, do feel that this is the best project uh, to come forth with, which will meet our vision, which is become, becoming the most desirable bundle community in Southwest Florida. 
We think the timing of this is good. It's the right thing to do for the long-term success of Pelican Sound. It will bring all of our amenities up to the market and up to the minute. Uh, we believe the future is now. Uh, material and labor costs are only going up. We see this already when we look at the uh, price per square foot of what this is costing versus what it cost five years ago at the River Club. It's already significantly increased. So that's going to continue. Uh, and we have also had the uh, advantage of locking in a very low below market interest rate. Um, and if you waited and didn't do this to another year or two, you would not be able to guarantee that interest rate. And giving you the flexibility of payment options, we feel is another uh, advantageous way to uh, fund this project. So with that, we hope you can support the project. Uh, we hope this was educational for you to get uh, more information on the project so you can make an intelligent vote when the vote goes out uh, later this week. Uh, thank you for your time.